Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Keeping Goals. If you're new here, my name is Conor O'Keefe and Keeping Goals is a vlog following my attempt at becoming a professional goalkeeper at the highest level of international football. If you watched last week's vlog, which I hope you did, if you haven't, make sure you go back and watch it now. You'll know that I've recently moved teams. I have just signed with a team called FC Bruno's Magpies in the Gibraltar National League. Today is Friday the 17th of January. Tomorrow, Saturday, 4 p.m., I have my first game with FC Bruno's Magpies against St. Joseph's. It's the beginning of the Gibraltar National League Championship Group, which is the top six teams in the league. We are fifth in the league. St. Joseph's are second, a very, very good team. But as I said in last week's vlog, FC Bruno's Magpies, we brought in a lot of new players. We have a new management team, and I'm really, really excited to go and test ourselves against one of the strongest teams in the league and to show everyone the level that we're at and what we're hoping to achieve this season. So today's episode of Keeping Goals is gonna be a match day vlog. I'm gonna show you how I prepare for the game, what happens in the game, and the reflection afterwards. This evening, the night before, very relaxed. The game's at 4 p.m. tomorrow, so I'm sure in the morning I'll talk you through what I'm gonna do on match day in order to get ready to perform. But it's gonna be a good one. I'm really looking forward to the game and I can't wait to bring you guys along and show you how it goes. So, Frankie made a very nice cottage pie, which I finished before I had a chance to film. We had cottage pie, which is basically potatoes, peas, beef, carrots, carrots, anything else? Onions. Onions. We had it with some beetroot, which beetroot juice is used as a supplement by athletes to help with cardio, respiratory endurance. So there's a little pro tip for you. Add some beetroot into your pre-game diet. This evening now we're gonna chill, watch a film. I think we might watch Creed or something else. But that's basically it for this evening, just relaxing and getting mentally and physically prepared for tomorrow. So, I'm gonna go and wash up before I get in trouble. <laughs> Good morning guys. So, game day. Woke up feeling fresh, feeling excited, feeling ready for the game. Looking forward to it. As I said before, it's gonna be a very, very tough one but one that will show us where we are as a group and how we can compete in this league, seeing as we're playing one of the strongest teams in the championship group. So far this morning, woke up about nine, half nine, had my breakfast, the breakfast that you guys have seen on here multiple times, porridge oats, soy milk, blueberries, bananas, uh, protein powder, peanut butter, all kind of put together. I find that is a very effective breakfast for me before training, before games. Had a shower, got ready. It's now about quarter to 11. Kickoffs at four. We've got to be at the stadium in Gibraltar, half two. Gonna leave here, Estepona, about quarter past one. So now, for a couple of hours, I've got a couple of things that I need to do in order to prepare myself physically and mentally for the game. The first thing that I've got to do is pack my kit back. So, you guys have seen before what I take to games in terms of kit. Not much has really changed. Welcome to the boot room, aka the utility room, and I just wanted to show you the gloves that I'm going to be wearing today. As you guys know, I wear Calia gloves, I think they're incredible. These are the gloves that I'm going to be wearing today, and these are the hybrid cut. So, a little bit of a mix of a roll finger and a negative cut. I've worn these probably for the last couple of weeks, and they're incredible. Love the fit, the grip's amazing, the security of the kind of wrist strap and the backhand are really really reassuring in terms of your set position, in terms of the security in your glove. These might be my favourite pair of Calia gloves so far. Just wanted to let you guys know that in case you fancy the pair and if you do fancy a pair, the link to the Calia website is underneath this video and you can use the discount code OKEY for 10% off any of the Calia products. But yeah, hybrid cut is a bit of a worldie. Once I've packed my bag and that's all ready to go and I'm confident that I've got everything I need, I normally double check it at least two or three times in terms of my OCD that I've got everything that I want to have on a game day. 
But the next phase is to go through a kind of imagery routine. So I've spoken to you guys about your athletic zone. Those are the guys that I work with on the kind of mental aspect of sport, mental training in preparation for games. One thing that we do together is we devise an imagery routine that I do on the morning of a game, which is basically visualizing what I'm gonna see when I'm playing my game, when I'm getting ready for the game, during the warm up, things I might smell, things I might hear, trying to rehearse almost those senses that I will feel before, during and after the game so that it doesn't come as a surprise, so that I'm fully ready for what's going to happen and I can perform to the best of my ability. Finally, after that, I normally just watch a couple of videos. I'll watch some of my own highlights, things that I've done this year, things that I've done really well, things to put me in a good frame of mind to go out and perform. I recently watched an interview with Tom Heaton where he spoke about the importance of his psychological warm-up the day of a game and he mentioned how important it was for him to do both his visualisation, his imagery, but also to watch videos of his highlights. He even said in that interview that if he had the choice between a mental warm-up like that and a physical warm-up, he'd pick the mental warm-up because it would get himself ready to perform regardless of what he would do in terms of physically warming up before a game. And I would highly recommend that you do something similar in preparation for your games. But that's what I'll be doing this morning. I'll then have a little bit of lunch about 1pm, about three hours before my game, and then we'll head off to the stadium and take you guys along. So I'm going to crack on with all of that and I will speak to you in a bit. So we're off. Franks, excited for the game? I'm very excited for the first official Bruno's game. A lot has changed, new club, new team, but a lot is still the same. We're still going to drive to the same stadium, play on the same pitch we've played on lots of times against a team that we've played before. So. Mm -hmm. It'll be different, but the same. <laughs> same, but different. Exactly. But we're aiming for a win. Let's go and do it. Yeah. I'll give the camera to Franks and then we'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed, wish is the best. Let's do this.
So a very frustrating result, a frustrating game. It's always disappointing to lose, but especially when you perform so well as a team and you feel like you deserve more from the game. Reflecting on it, watching back the footage, the lads were fantastic. The performances put in by all the players were brilliant. We deserved at least a draw, in my opinion, given the chances created. And overall, luck wasn't really on our side. We missed good chances, we hit the post, which you didn't see in the footage. And then at the other end of the pitch, they got that look that sometimes you need to win a game. The second goal, for example, you couldn't see it on the footage, but he's bundled his way somehow through a tackle, hit a shot, which is going straight at me before it takes a huge deflection off the fullback's heel into the far bottom corner. I got fingers on it, it was so close to keeping it out. So there's definitely frustration looking back at that game. The Gibraltar Football Association have put up the full game on their YouTube channel, so go and give that a watch if you want to watch the full highlights. For example, the final goal, which you didn't see in that footage, was in the final minute, the 90th minute, a very, very nicely hit volley from the edge of the box into the bottom corner, which sometimes you have to hold your hands up and say, great goal. But from a personal point of view, reflecting on the game, first and foremost, I am very, very frustrated with the first goal. It's a big mistake on my part. I haven't read the bounce properly and I should hold that shot. Spilling it into a dangerous area is always gonna cause trouble and the strikers followed it in well to score. It's one of those things which you very rarely make the mistake of, but in order to get to the next level, you need to be holding 100 out of 100 of those shots. So for me, in training, I need to work very, very hard on reading that bounce properly up off the AstroTurf. All the minute details to make sure that I hold instead of parry. My aim going into a new club, a debut with a new team, is always to just do the basics right. So when you make a mistake like that quite early in a game, there's one of two ways that it can go. You can either lose your head, get very nervous, start making more mistakes, or you can take it right back to basics and just concentrate on doing the simple things right. That was what I tried to do after that moment and something that I was quite happy in terms of how I did. My distribution was accurate. I came and took crosses. I was organizing well in English and Spanish, not dominating the game as much as I would want to in terms of being extremely effective in all my actions. But when something has gone wrong, you do need to just rein it in, control yourself, make sure you do the basics right and build back up from there. I'm still learning how the team are playing and how I can be as effective as possible within that team. And in training, I am continuing to work very, very hard in order to get to that dominant level where I can be a huge player for the team and to help them get positive results. But I hope from that footage you saw the capability that we have as a team. We'll have to keep working to make sure we keep putting in good performances, even better performances from that, but also to make sure that we get positive results. But that's it for this week's episode of Keeping Goals. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry it wasn't a more positive result from the game, but a lot of things to take from it. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. I hope it brought you some value, as always. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss an episode of Keeping Goals. Please give this video a like if you did indeed like it. And I wanna know what you guys wanna see more of in the coming weeks of the vlog. Obviously with a new team, a new chapter of the career, let me know in the comments something that you want to see in the vlog in the near future and I'll try and make sure that we're making the content that you guys want to see the most. This week's Patron of the Week is Connor Shaddick. Connor, thank you so much for your support. I wouldn't be able to do what I do without the support of patrons like yourself. So here, as a little thank you, is your Keep and Roll shout out. We've added some new benefits to the Patreon page, so if you guys want to get involved and receive some of the benefits received by patrons, such as Patron of the Week, make sure you follow the link below this video and become a patron to the Keeping Goals Union. Also, if you guys want to chat more about topics that come up in the Keeping Goals vlogs, or you want to tell me about how your own Keeping Goals journey is going, make sure you join the Keeping Goals Union Facebook group. Just search the Keeping Goals Union on Facebook and come and join the conversation there. But thank you for watching as always. I really appreciate your time and your attention. I'll see you next week for the next episode of Keeping Goals on Sunday, as always. But have a great week. Keep chasing improvement. And I'll speak to you in a bit.